everyone, Sabrina here from Scrappy Tales Crafts, and today I'm going to be showing you the five cards I created with the July 2020 Hero Arts card kit. Right now I'm just showing you what comes in the kit. The stamp set and the coordinating dies had an Atlantis ocean theme. You also get some glittery papers in purple, light blue, and dark blue. At the time I filmed this video, I thought those were papers, but apparently they're stickers, so they do have a backing sheet that you can remove, but I didn't realize that at the time, so I'm going to use them as papers. You also get five ink cubes that I will be using for my stamping. The stamp set in the kit is actually a layering set, so I'm going to be using these ink cubes to stamp all of my images, and included in the set is a really pretty coral reef large stamp, that is what I'm inking up right now, and that has three layers to it. So I'm going to start by inking the first layer with multiple colors. I will pull in some other colors from my stash. For that first one I just stamped, I used the pool party ink from the kit. This one I'm inking up now is sandstone, it's another Hero Arts ink cube from a previous kit. And then this last one, I'm going to use the darkest blue from the kit for my first layer. And I did pre-plan my card designs. Typically, I don't do that with stamping and coloring kits, but I honestly don't want to stamp more than I have to, so I do like to plan out my cards before I get started when it comes to the layering stamps. And I will say they are more challenging for me, too, so... I feel a little bit more comfortable going into it knowing my designs ahead of time and also knowing the color schemes. So that is what I did for this month's kit. For my second layer on this dark blue coral reef, I'm going to actually use my Versifying Onyx Black ink. I wanted to create a really cool tone-on-tone -on -tone masculine card for that one, so that's why I went with the darker colors. For this one, I'm going to stamp the second layer with the green and pink ink from the kit. And then for this coral reef, I'll just use the green ink. This particular layer had seaweed and coral, so you can definitely combine different colors. It's pretty easy to use two colors on this stamp. Alright, so for the third layer on the Pool Party Coral Reef, I'm going to use the dark blue for the details on the rocks, and then I'll use the pink ink for the additional coral pieces. And I thought this ended up looking so cool. I'm always intimidated by these types of kits, but whenever I start working with them, it's just really fun. I love seeing all the layers come together, so that's how that one turned out. For my dark blue one, I'm going to use a navy blue Versifying ink, so this is just slightly darker than that first blue that I added. And I will have all of the additional inks that I used in my description. Off camera, I did a few more of those brown coral reefs, this one right here, um, just because this one ended up being my favorite. For the detail on the rocks, I used cocoa which is another Hero Arts ink, and then I use the medium shade of blue for the coral. So those are the three designs I went with. You can see I also went ahead and stamped out some of the individual images from the set. The seahorse and the fish, I did two-tone stamping, so you can see I'm adding pink to, or now I'm adding green to the body, and I'll just add a little bit of blue to the end of its tail, just to give it some color variation, some interest. I didn't bother to do that with the mermaid or the Merlin guy. I think that's Merlin. Poseidon? No, Merlin is a wizard, isn't he? Oh my gosh. Okay, moving on. I'm now stamping the dolphins. I just did those in solid colors. And I'm using my Memento Dewdrops for the extra colors. These are super handy. They're easy to grab. And they're nice for small images like this. So again, all of the inks I will I used will be listed down below. So here are the completed images. I'm just showing you how they all turned out. Now, typically I would use the coordinating dies to cut these out, but I decided to just run them through my scan and cut. That was nice and quick. And I also did not want the white borders around these images just because with ocean scenes, I feel like the white border is distracting. It makes the images look more like stickers. And I wanted the fish and the coral reefs to feel integrated into the scene and not like I just stuck fish onto an ink blended background. So I hope that makes sense. 
And yeah, you can see for the first card, I die cut a gray stitch rectangle frame and I added acetate behind it, of course. And now I'm going to stick one of my coral reefs behind the acetate. I'm making sure to only add the glue to the areas I knew would be covered by that frame. And here you can see I die cut some of those sparkly blue papers from some stitched hillside dies. These are by Trinity Stamps, they're for slimline cards, so you can see I can just cut parts of this off and stack the two colors on top of each other, which is really nice. I don't have to cut multiple hills. And I really love these sparkly papers. Apparently they're sticky behind them, so you can remove the paper and it sticks but I didn't know that at the time. I realized that at the end of the video when I tried die cutting with it, I do not recommend die cutting with this paper just because the backing sheet will peel off at that point and some of the, I think it's almost like a film of that sparkly paper over the top and it just kind of peeled off. So I didn't end up using my die cuts, but I did like using it as background panels. So I wanted to decorate, if you haven't guessed, this is a fish tank, and I wanted there to be some fish coming from this pink structure. I don't know what that would be called. It kind of looks like a coliseum, like a, I don't know, like a rundown building of some kind. And you see these a lot in fish tanks, so I decided to put a pink one in and tuck a few fish swimming through it. And then I'm going to add a crab. I think I'll add a few more fish and then also a seahorse. This would have been a lot easier if I didn't have that acetate. I should have glued all my fish before adding my frame on top, but that's okay. Luckily I realized it before I closed the tank off with that last blue wave, which I'm going to add after I add one more fish, you can see I gave them eyeballs just with the black pen. And now I will finish this little fish tank off with that last wave at the top. Trim that off. And I actually removed the gray frame because I wanted to pop it up with foam tape. All of my cards in today's video can easily be converted into shaker cards because I think I use acetate on every card, but I thought that the sparkle paper was enough and so I didn't add any sequins, but you definitely can. So I'm pulling in a white card base here. I used 110 pound white Nina cardstock for my card bases and I off camera stamped and white heat embossed all of the sentiments from the stamp set. I also use the coral embossing powder. And so I chose one of the sentiments with the coral embossing powder and added that to the bottom of the tank. And then just to finish this card off, I'm going to use some of these droplets, which came in, I think, June of last year's kit. And I will actually pull that kit in for today's video because it matched really nicely. So I'm going to attach my fish tank to the center and then that will complete my first card. Here's a close up. So for my second card, like I said, I'm going to use the kit from June 2018 and this one complements this month's kit very well. It has mostly sea creatures in it, so I noticed a few other people combine these two kits together, but I'm just going to use the fancy frame and cut it from some white cardstock. And I'm going to color the coral and the grasses with the ink cubes that came in the kit. So I'm going to first start by taping this panel down just because I didn't want it to move and I also wanted to keep the white borders. Now you can see my dies shifted and I do not have a perfect rectangle. I will trim it down to make it more even later, but for now, I figured the extra room around the edges would be better to tape down onto my glass mat. I did just use some washi tape to tape that down, and now I'm going to color in my seaweed with the green ink that came in the kit. 
I'm going to pull in some bamboo leaves by Memento just to add a darker green. And then for the coral at the bottom of this panel, I will use the pink and the blue ink from the kit. And I'm using some finger daubers to do this. I like that they're nice and small, so you can blend on ink in smaller areas. At first I thought I wanted a darker pink, but I definitely wanted those to be a different color, so I'm just adding the blue right over that. And then I will remove my washi tape, and like I said, I will trim this panel down so that the sides are more even. And then I will work on my background. And I'm actually going to ink blend with the three blue ink cubes that came in the kit. Oh, before I do that, I did not want those, I don't know what they are, they're just like two strips down the center of the seaweed. And I think that was because it's supposed to look like an aquarium, but I didn't want that, so I'm just going to trim those off with my scissors. I'm making sure to be careful because they are integrated in with the seaweed, and I'm trying to make sure that I don't cut any of the grasses off. Okay, so I thought it would be cool to add the coral from the kit behind this frame, but it was a little too short, so I'm going to cut it in half and add each corner to each side of this frame. And you can't see it, it's kind of hidden, but I thought that just added an extra layer. I think it looks pretty cool, so. Yeah, I'm going to attach that with my art glitter glue, and then I will add acetate behind this frame. But I think I'm going to work on the ink blended panel first, yes. So like I said, I'm going to use the three blue inks from the kit. I'm using a Picket Fence Studio blender brush to apply the ink onto this 110 pound white Nina card panel. I like ink blending on Nina just because it's a bright white, so the colors really stay true and bright. And I will say that these ink cubes are different from previous kit ink cubes. I think the ones in the previous kits were dye inks and this month's kits were pigment inks, but I don't know for sure. Either way, I really prefer these inks over the dye inks because the dye inks stain stamps really badly. And I know it's not a huge deal, but I really like when you can just wipe ink off and there's no staining. And I was able to do that with these inks. And they're just as vibrant as dye. You can ink blend with them fairly well. You can see I'm going over this panel with multiple layers, but that's partly because these are small ink cubes. But in the end, I really like how this blend turned out. These blues are so pretty together. So I'm going to just finish up the last layer of ink, and then I will add some water droplets, but first I thought it would be cool to have some rays of sunshine going through the water. So to do that, I'm going to use some more washi tape. Now I know there's sun ray stencils out there, so you can use that instead, but I want to show you how you can create your own quote unquote stencil. It's going to take a little bit more time, but it works. It creates the exact same effect. You just kind of want to add your tape in a diagonal and have the tape joining together, closer together towards the top. So there's my first ray of sun, and then I'll just add another right next to it. For my ocean rays, I'm using Unicorn White Pigment Ink by Hero Arts, and just blending right over that blue ink, and it's going to lighten it subtly. It's not a bright white, but that's actually a good thing, because you don't want this to be super obvious. And this is a nice ink to have in your stash. I like to use it a lot on Christmas cards for snow scenes whenever I just want a subtle snowy background. And I'm just applying this ink with a small Picket Fence Studios blender brush. I do have one dedicated brush for white ink, but you can see I'm being pretty messy and I'm cross-contaminating my ink pad there. So you might want to wipe off your brush between each ray, just to wipe off that blue ink. 
So I'm going to add some water splatters to this background and then pick up the excess with a paper towel. And then I will just add my frame on top to see how that turned out. And I think that looks really cool. So I'm going to work even more on this background. This is probably the most involved background I've ever created on my channel. And I thought it would be cool to add some fish in the background. So I'm going to use this fish stamp from the June 2018 kit. Like I said, those two kits coordinate very well. And I only use this one stamp from that kit. I tried to focus mostly on this month's kit, but I'll admit, guys, I struggled with this one. I'm not sure why, but I think it's just the stamp layering stamp sets are new to me. I don't use them very often. And oftentimes I feel kind of limited on what I can do with them. So it's just a little bit more challenging coming up with card designs. But I am happy with how these five turned out. I will say they took a whole day to make. Usually I can make 10 cards in one day. But I was going really slow with this month's kit just because the backgrounds were more involved. Um, I took more time into meticulously figuring out how I wanted each card to look. So... I was exhausted after working with this kit, but I think the cards are really pretty. These layering sets are gorgeous. I just have to play around with them a little bit more. And I know they do these layering sets quite often. And they always tend to sell out. Oh, one thing I want to mention real quick is the June kit. I did not receive my June kit. I think they had some shipping problems. And I emailed Hero Arts, and they said like about 30 kits got lost in the mail. So I am supposed to be getting the June kit. I'm not sure when. They had to order some more kits. But I do want to do a video on that kit because it is so pretty. It did sell out, so I definitely thought it was worth the wait. But don't worry, I will have a video with that kit because it is one of my favorites that they've released this year. So as you can see, I glued down a few of the fish. I gave some of my fish some stripes and I gave all of them some eyeballs. And even though these five cards were a little bit challenging for me to come up with, I still really enjoyed the card making process. Part of the reason I'm subscribed to Hero Arts is because I enjoy the challenge that these kits give me. It forces me to think outside the box more creatively. It introduces me to new techniques and styles that I don't typically gravitate towards and overall I just enjoy you know doing something different every once in a while and that's pretty much once a month I do that with these kits and they're the only company I subscribe monthly to all the other companies I kind of pick and choose the kits I want to work with but Hero Arts has always been tried and true and their kits are just different and fun and I really feel like they're the best valued kit in the industry so I don't plan on unsubscribing to the Hero kits and I do plan on doing lots of future videos and if I do five cards or ten cards it usually depends on how many ideas I can come up with and also how much time I have to devote to making cards. You know, I've taken on some design teams this year, so my YouTube time has cut down from the kits, but I definitely try to post the hero kits every month. Alright, so while I was rambling, I added acetate behind my frame popped it up over my ink blended panel and then to embellish this card I'm going to use those same little bubbles from the June 2018 kit and here is a picture of how that card turned out this one's my favorite out of the five I just really love how that frame turned out so this is my masculine card that I was talking about at the beginning of the video I'm going to start by stamping the wave stamp from the set with some VersaFine Onyx Black ink. I thought it would be cool to have an area sectioned off for my sentiment and then everything below that would be my Atlantis scene. So I'm going to mask the top of this panel just with a scrap piece of paper and I attach that with some washi tape to make sure it didn't move. And now I'm going to take some Salty Ocean Distress ink and I'm going to pull that ink from the sides of the panel. Usually I like to go from bottom to top, but this time I wanted there to be a center highlight. 
So I'm applying my ink on the sides using my Picket Fence Blender brush here. And then I'm going to add faded jeans to add some more dark color. I really wanted this to look like the deep ocean. So I wanted my blending to be nice and dark, but I am making sure to keep that center fairly light. So I'm going to splatter on some water, pick the excess up with my paper towel, and then I will remove that paper at the top. Now there were some areas that did not get ink blended because they were covered by that paper, so I'm just going to find a Copic marker that matches my faded jeans and my salty ocean and color those sections in. So now I'm going to assemble my die cuts. If I were to change one thing on this card, it would be the color of the rocks. I think I should have went with a dark gray instead of the blue, but I still like how this card turned out. Okay, so I wanted there to be some more of those sun rays coming through. This time I'm going to make them a little bit more skinny, and I think I only add two or three rays. And I wanted them to shine down on that Colosseum structure thing. I'm trying to make it look magical or mystical. I think the rays kind of help give that effect. Okay. So I'm going to add my coral reef at the bottom again. And I just felt like my coral reef was blending in too much. So in order to help it stand out a little bit more, I'm going to add vellum behind it. And I'm actually going to add the fancy dye from the kit behind this coral reef. And that's going to lighten the background behind it. And it's just going to add another bit of texture to the background. All right, so I'm trying to figure out where Mr. Poseidon is going to go. And then I'm going to glue down my building. You can see I added a mermaid sitting on the rock. I think it would be cute to do like a little mermaid scene if you colored her hair in red and the little fish yellow and blue like flounder. I'm surprised no one has done that yet. And the Poseidon guy kind of looks like Ariel's father. So I added foam tape behind the coral reef. I'm going to pop it up. And then I'm going to add some foam tape behind Poseidon and the seaweed. Just to make sure nothing is sagging. And then I think I'm going to stamp out my sentiment. I chose Deeply Grateful for You, and I stamped that out with VersaFine Onyx Black Ink, and then I think to finish this card off, I'm just going to add some dark blue dolphins. And then that's going to finish up this card. I'm just going to attach it to my white card base. I thought about adding it to a black mat, but I just felt like for once in my life, now, don't count on this ever happening again, but I did think it was a little too dark. And I went for the white, which is not what I typically do, but... Yeah, that's going to complete my third card. Here's a close-up. Okay, for card four and five, I'm going to use this alcohol inked background panel that I created. I'm going to cut circles from it, and I'm going to use the negative and the positive pieces for my next two cards. And for the alcohol inks, I used a blue and a green, and off camera right now, I just splattered a whole bunch of dark blue all over my hands. So that was real fun trying to clean up. I always see people wearing gloves with alcohol inks, and I think moving forward, that's what I have to do because, oh boy, was it hard to get that alcohol ink off of my hands. I had to use like three layers of hand sanitizer, alcohol wipes. It just was not coming off my hands and it's still under my fingernails and I can't get it off. So if you guys know how to remove alcohol ink from your skin, please let me know. And you can see I kind of struggled with this alcohol blending. I feel like the one thing that 
I've learned with alcohol blending is to just don't mess with it for too long because the more I mess with it, the less I liked it. But I did end up with something that I liked and like I said, I die cut some circles from it. And I'm going to use the negative piece for card four. You can see I did some ink blending on a light blue piece of cardstock to add some dimension to these bubbles. I stamped some fish using that broken china ink. And then I'm going to add a coral reef to the bottom of this panel. It's going to cover up that third bubble, but I was okay with that. I'm going to stamp out another Colosseum building thing. I actually ran out, so I had to stamp and die cut out another one. And then I'm just going to decorate the bubbles with some of the fish. I'm going to add a crab to one of the rocks. I don't know if this mermaid makes it or not. I think she does, actually. At first I thought I would stamp out another fish, but I didn't like how it turned out, so I'm going to just glue a die-cut one over it. And I'm just playing around with the different die cuts I have left over. Here's where you can see I die cut those sparkly papers from that fancy die in the kit, but because it's a sticker paper, the sticker part was peeling from the sparkly part, so I felt like it just didn't look very good. So instead, I decided to glue down a vellum piece. And I think that was nice. It was a little bit more subtle. I feel like the sparkly mixed with the alcohol ink background might have been too much anyway. So you can see I stamped out a sentiment into that largest bubble. I don't like how that looks. I feel like the fish in the background are too busy. So I'm going to white heat emboss it on black cardstock and glue um, that over it here. You can see. And I like that much better. And this sentiment is from that June 2018 kit. I just wanted some different sentiments. But you could definitely use one of the sentiments from the kit instead. I am gluing my fish down with my 3-in-1 glue. I think that's because my art glitter glue was clogged and I couldn't find my needle, but guess what? My needle is right on camera. <laughs> and I see it right by my hand. But that's okay. I think I realize this and I switch over to my glitter glue after I attach this panel onto my light blue panel. And then I will flip that light blue panel over, add some ATG tape, and attach it to my card base. I decided to glue down some light blue dolphins for this card. I thought they looked kind of cute. Alright, so I'm just going to add my panel onto my card base, and then that will complete card number four. I don't think I add any bubbles to this card just because there's a lot happening. But I do like how that background turned out. I think this is a cute card. So for my final card, I wanted to use those circles that I die cut from the panel. And I'm going to add the coral reef onto my circles. So I'm just going to use my art glitter glue, attach a portion of the coral reef onto the circle, and then cut around it with my scissors. And I'm going to do that with the large circle and the medium-sized circle. I felt like the last one was a little bit too small so I didn't add the coral reef to that one I just added a little seahorse in the center you might have noticed that my pink building didn't make it to the last card so I will just attach it to that large circle I will add a yellow fish to the medium circle and then my little seahorse to that small one I thought about using a green card base and I thought that looked kinda nice but ultimately I decided on a white one I'm going to attach a blue mermaid sitting on the rock on that large circle. And then I'm going to take one of my white heat embossed sentiments. I chose Sending You Oceans of Love. I think I only used two of the sentiments from the stamp set because I felt like those two matched with the theme well. And those were the sentiments I needed in my stash. So I'm going to attach the circles with my art glitter glue as well as that black banner. And then that's going to basically complete my last card. I'm just going to embellish it with some of those blue and green bubbles that I've been using in today's video. I thought those complemented the colors I chose very nicely. And they do look like bubbles, so. 
yeah, that's going to complete my final card here. Nice, quick, and simple one because I was clearly running out of time at the end there, but I like how it turned out. Here is a final look through at all five cards I created in today's video. I hope I gave you guys some inspiration to those of you who received the kit. I'm not sure if it's sold out. I think it is, but if it isn't, I will have it linked down below. Let me know in the comments which card was your favorite, and if you haven't yet already, please subscribe to my channel. I also just posted a giveaway video a few days ago if you want to check that out. I have $175 worth of prizes to give away, and Hero Arts is one of the sponsors. So I will have that video linked down below if you haven't checked it out already. And thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time. Bye!